Hey everybody, Economic Ninja here. I hope you're doing well. I wanna talk about something that I get asked a lot about and something that I actually, it has to do with what I noticed that happened in the economy last week. And that is, as the Federal Reserve came out and they talked about interest rates and they said they're gonna raise it and they raised it huge. They did uh, 75 basis points, which equates to 3%. Oh, I'm sorry, 3%, geez oh. 75 basis points is three quarters of 1% uh, hike in the Federal Reserve reserves fed funds rate right and we all know or if you don't uh, as the federal reserve raises their federal uh their fed funds rate it is the interest rate that they uh loan money out at uh to other banks and institutions uh all interest rates start to go up that's why we've been seeing the mortgage rates rising like crazy we've seen uh credit card debt and interest rate go up um you're going to start seeing uh auto loans going up things like that right so they are in a fed rate hike cycle okay the last time we saw this was from 2015 to 2018 and ironically the uh federal reserve couldn't get their benchmark rate to over two and a half percent before the Dow lost 20% in value. Uh, it was out around 19% actually. Um, and before that, the Federal Reserve could not get their benchmark rate uh, passed. I wanna say, I wanna say it was at 6% back then. But the point being is back then there was a lot less debt. There was even a lot less debt back in 2015, right? And we've seen that as more and more money gets made out of thin air, right? Uh, the the issue is that they can't raise those rates too high because there's so much money out there that's been loaned out. People and institutions, companies cannot service the debt at these higher interest rates, okay? So the Fed is in a corner, that is for sure. Now, something interesting is, is watching the price of gold. I've been talking about gold a lot lately. Gold uh, has is massively up since uh, the year 2000 and since all of these real games started getting played in the modern era ever since the dot-com burst, right? We had the dot-com burst, they had to drop rates, and then they tried a couple years later to raise them, and that led to the housing burst, right? That also caused a housing bubble, then the housing burst when they raised those rates. Then we saw them slash rates again, but they started printing money through quantitative easing, and they took on a lot of assets on their balance sheet, right? So then they started trying, they lowered those rates, let it sit for a handful of years, and then they tried to raise them again in 2015. And again, they couldn't do it until the market started to tank. tank. Then we're in this era. Um, ironically, everything was coming to a head between 2018 and 2019 when the interbank lending rate was spiking to 12%. That is absolutely massive. And in September of 2019, the Federal Reserve had to step in and open the repo window. And that was catastrophic. The reason why is because the last time they'd opened up the, the repo window was literally right after Lehman Brothers had crashed, like six months, as a matter of fact, after Lehman Brothers crashed, if I'm not mistaken. No, not six months, it was like four. Uh, but you can see the scope of how big of a deal it is when the, the Fed opens the repurchase window and starts to uh, loan money to institutions uh, and essentially purchase these horrible assets on the market to try and stabilize the economy. So it was obviously really, really bad. So my point being is that uh, to get to that point, um, it's, it's really, I always get thrown off by people driving. They see some, a camera come up and they like want to be a part of it so bad. Um, so my point being is that uh, when it was bad, that was when Lehman Brothers had crashed, right? We were in the Great Recession. And then we saw it again in 2019. Well, now guess what happens? The world closes down, right? And all this money is printed, amazing amounts of money. So now we're talking about gold. Gold went up during the printing uh, after the dot-com boom and bust. Then it went up through another spike when we saw quantitative easing come out and we saw the, the bust of Lehman Brothers and, and that subsequent uh, a printing cycle, right? And now we're at another cycle and I want people to understand that. But something happened the other day that was very different. And that is that gold didn't go down when everybody expected it to. You see, after the Fed raised rates three quarters of a point, I, uh, we were all expecting the dollar to get stronger. And what we saw was the opposite. This actually blew my mind. We saw the stock market start to sell off. At the end of last week, we saw the Dow Jones down almost 800 points, right? And for two days, we saw it down and we saw gold up one of those days. And then the next day, gold was down just a little. And that was very, very telling because on a day where the Dixie, the DXY, the dollar index was, was feeling a little bit of pressure, just a little bit, gold was down nominally but it was pretty much holding itself. Now, through this whole thing, gold hit a spike of um, around $2,000 back in, I got the notes here. I got my notes, cardboard notes. Uh, let's see, where was it? April 17th, right? Gold hit 
a little over $2,000 an ounce. And it's pulled back off those highs. And the question I'm getting all the time is how do I leverage that? Like, how do I leverage it? Um, you gotta, if you're in gold or silver or precious metals at all, or even uh, mining metals, um, industrial metals like copper and things like that, this isn't like a get rich overnight, it's the long term, right? If you would have owned gold back in 2000 and you had it today, you would have actually made a greater percentage of return on your investment than if you were holding certain index funds, all right? People don't understand that. I have that happen all the time. People go, hey, how's your, how's your gold doing? I'm like, because it's down like 10%, let's say in the last three months, I go, it's doing great. I mean, how are your stocks doing? How is your crypto doing? I mean, gold is doing what it's supposed to do. However, everyone's expecting that parabolic jump and it doesn't happen until the very end. And are we starting it? In my opinion, yes. Do we have some time? Yes, but here's the problem. And I'm gonna give you an example. This video is actually being sponsored today and I thank the sponsor of that video, it's Star Peak Mining. And the ticker we're gonna put it up is, uh, it's on the OTC boards, uh, it is STRPF, all right? Now I'm gonna use this as an example of what's going on in the gold market and the gold mining companies because, and Star Peak's different because it has a VMS deposit and we're gonna talk about that. But uh, what I've been doing is I invest in mining companies, right? But when gold pulls back, mining shares pull back massively. But on the flip side, like what happened in 1980 to 82, when gold starts its run, the mining stocks are so leveraged to gold, they explode in value where gold can double and a mining stock can. You could, it was normal back in the early 80s to see a mining stock go up 10 times, even some went up 100 times, okay? So it's very similar to what we see in the cryptocurrency market. When Bitcoin moves up, let's say 10%, you will see on those days, many, many altcoins outproduce Bitcoin uh, or out, um, uh, perform Bitcoin on a percentage basis. You'll have Bitcoin up 10%. You could see cryptocurrency, certain ones up 20, 25% a day, okay? So that's why I'm in miners. But here's the lesson you need to learn right now. And this is very important, okay? Um, let me give an example. And we'll use Star Peak as an example. Uh, like I said, sponsoring this video, I thank them for this. Um, they've drilled, a, they've been, they're an exploration company, right? And they're drilling like crazy. They've drilled over 90,000 meters. And as all of their drilling uh, results have come out, 90% of those holes that they drilled, they're hitting metal, okay? They are a VMS, uh, and we're gonna talk about price action too. I really wanna hit that. They're a VMS deposit. Okay, so many of you guys might be asking what a VMS deposit is, and this is what it stands for. A volcanogenic massive sulfide ore deposit, all right? Try and say that fast three times. It's also known as VMS ore deposits. It's a type of metal sulfide ore deposit, mainly copper and zinc, which are associated with and created by volcanic associated hydrothermal events in submarine environments. You guys know how good the uh, ninja reads. <laughs> Point being is this, they're very rare. And right now there's about th only, Canada has only found 350 of these discoveries ever, okay? So Star Peak Mining ha has a VMS deposit, all right? So it's it's a ton of, of metals all pushed in, in high, um, what is it? VMS has a higher concentration than um, other normal deposits, primarily because of what happened with the volcanic uh, movements in the ground, all right? And it says right here, they account for VMS deposits, account for 27% of all the copper uh, found 49% of all the zinc and 40% of all the silver. So it's it's really impressive when when you can find one of these. These are what a lot of exploration companies are looking for and mining companies, um, and that's what they have. Now talk about money. This is what I think is very important. Gold. We were talking about when it hit its all time high uh, or is bumping it at in um, sorry April 17th of this last year. It hit just a little over two thousand dollars an ounce. Okay. As of right now, the recording of this, it's at 1,839. So it's down less than 10% from its all time high, right? Or, or close to it, okay? Don't quote me on that. I don't have that on my notes. The GDX is a gold miners index. It's, it's used to uh, weigh in on the strength or the weakness of the mining in uh, world, right? And when it hit its high, when gold hit its high, right? On the same day, April 17th, the GDX hit $41 but right now it's at $30.39 as of the recording of this. So that's down 25%. So you have gold down less than 10%. And in the same amount of time, the GDX has gotten hammered 25%.
Now, on top of that, you look at Star Peak. As of uh, the April 17th, Star Peak was trading at 109 a share, right? As of right now, it's at 83 cents, a very similar move down. Now, has Star Peak done anything negative? No, they haven't. As a matter of fact, they're still working. And I'll give you an example. Since May, they have been doing more drilling. As a matter of fact, they've actually had two sets of drilling results in May alone, right? So actively drilling, actively looking for more uh, uh, metal, and they're building that map so that they can put together a feasibility study or a, uh, a project that they can now either pull to production themselves, actually go and get the equipment and mine it themselves, or put it on the market for larger companies to come in and say, hey, we wanna buy your land, you obviously have found metal here and we wanna buy it, and that's when a lot of uh, exploration companies start to go through the roof, right? Is it guaranteed? No, but that is what all exploration companies are doing, and they're obviously hitting these drill holes. Now, um, also in May, they had warrants exercised, and that's a really neat thing that most people don't understand, I wanna explain that too. When Accredited investors invest in mining companies, especially exploration companies. Sometimes they are offered a share for sale on, a, on the private market, right? Because they wanna raise money to go out and do drills, drilling, and then they're also offered a warrant in some cases. And when a warrant is offered, it's offered at an exercise price um, in the future, any time from, let's say, usually when I've seen the, inv the investment, blah, blah, the investments I make uh, can be exercised anywhere between two and three years from the date of purchase of the original share, right? So what happens is investors are holding these warrants. They're holding the shares. Either they uh, can keep the shares. If they really like the company, they could sell the shares, but they hold on to those warrants. And what happens, let's give an example. Um, these warrants were exercised at 75 cents. So the strike price for that warrant was 75 cents. And that was made a couple of years ago. Well, when the date came along this last May, uh, there were a lot of investors, they were in the money. The share price was above 75 cents and they exercised those warrants. So they bought them and that goes into the fully diluted market cap. Well, what's neat about that is that is automatic financing for the company. So the company doesn't have to go out and raise more money right away. They get the money from the warrants that were exercised. So I like seeing that. The, the company put out a, a private placement a couple of years ago and now the warrants were in the money. So the share price has appreciated enough to where they're exercised. And now they have even more money to be able to continue their drilling program and get that much closer to being able to put this property, these properties on the market or take it to production themselves. So I like that. So I wanted to explain that to you guys because I think it's very, very interesting. There's a lot of information out there. I'm gonna link the company's info in the description of the video, but I just want to give an example of how right now, because of a stock market downturn, you are seeing gold get knocked down a little bit. You're seeing the GDX get knocked down a lot. And also individual miners, because that's what makes up the GDX, getting knocked down and it's not because they are doing anything wrong. They're still out there crushing it and they wanna tell their story because they're like, look, we're drilling over here, we're getting gold. This is what everybody wants because inflation's getting nutty and it's going to about to get even nuttier. Here's the question and put it in the comment section below. Then I'll know if you uh, made it this far, hashtag gold, but also let me know, do you think gold's gonna be worth more a year from now with all the crazy stuff the Federal Reserve's doing than what it is today? Today we're sitting around 1,800 and what, 50 bucks? give or take a few dollars, do you think it's going to be worth more or do you think it's going to be worth less a year from now? All right, guys, I thank you so much for watching. Appreciate your time. The Economic Ninja is out.